So I was reading my Bible. I read Psalm 41 and I saw this at the end of it, which says book two. And I thought I should read the beginning of Psalms. So these are my Bibles, two of them. <laughs> this, this Bible doesn't have an introduction in the book of Psalms. It goes right from Job into the book of Psalms. But this NIV Bible has a little introduction. So this is what I was going to read. The book of Psalms is a collection of song lyrics. Like many songs, they were first written in response to events in the lives of their authors. Later, the whole community used them in worship. When Israel returned from exile in Babylon, many of the songs from over the centuries were collected in the book of Psalms. The book is structured into five parts marked off by the phrase, Praise be to the Lord, Amen and Amen. These five books remind the reader of the five books of Moses. Like the law, these song lyrics can be read and studied for instruction. Psalm 1 emphasizes such meditation and seems to have been placed first to make this point. The five books also tell a three-part story of Israel's redemption, monarchy, exile, and return. The Psalms of King David dominate books 1 and 2. The beginning and ending of book three highlight Israel's exile. The fourth book ends with a plea that God bring the exiled people home. The fifth book declares that God has done just that. Now, the reason for the group of praise psalms at the end of the book is apparent. God has been faithful, judging Israel in exile, but then bringing the nation home again. The book of Psalms thus operates at two levels. Individually, the songs explore a wide variety of honest spiritual responses to God, while the overall collection tells and celebrates the work of God in history to save his people. I have another King James Version Bible here, and I'm going to maybe take a picture and read this. Okay, so here's a picture. I hope you can read along. I am going to read this whole thing from the intro to Psalms on a different King James Version Bible. The Hebrew title for this book is Book of Praises. The English title, however, was derived from the Greek word Psalmoi 5568, which means pious songs or music of stringed instruments. The Book of Psalms is a collection of the works of at least six authors. The titles of Psalms credit David with writing 73 Psalms and two others are assigned to him in the New Testament. Psalm 2, see Acts chapter 4, verse 25. Psalm 95, see Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7. Asaph was the author of 12 Psalms. Psalm 50, 73 through 83 or at least he is responsible for their preservation. The two sons of Korah wrote 11 psalms. Psalm 42, 44 through 49, 84, 85, 87, 88. Solomon composed two. Psalm 72, 127. Psalm 89 is attributed to Ethan, and Moses is the author of Psalm 90, and possibly Psalm 91. The book of Psalms was originally five separate books. Psalm 1 through 41, 42 through 72, 73 through 89, 90 through 106, 107 through 150. Each of the first four books conclude with a doxology, and the fifth is a fitting finale for the book as a whole. Consequently, it is believed that the Psalms were used for liturgical purposes. This is supported by Jewish tradition and the fact that the five books of Psalms correspond to the five books of the Pentateuch.
The individual psalms are often classified according to their content. Didactic psalms are those which give instruction, e.g. Psalm 119. The messianic psalms contain prophecy relating to the Messiah. See note on Psalm 22, 1 through 31. The imprecatory psalms involve pleas to God for the punishment of the wicked. See note on Psalm 109, 1 through 29. Penitential psalms express not only feelings of a repentant heart, but also appeal for divine cleansing. Psalm 6, 32, 38, 51, 102, 130, 143. Other psalms are classified according to their titles. Psalms of degrees or ascent were sung at the beginning of the worship services at the temple and by those who were traveling up to Jerusalem, Psalm 120 through 134. Miktam psalms deal with atonement or the covering over of sin, Psalm 16, 56 through 60. The psalms powerfully convey the feelings common to believers of all ages. The nature of Hebrew poetry, see Introduction to Job, is especially well suited to expressing strong feelings. The Psalms are intimately personal in that they explore the whole realm of human emotion, from deep despair to ecstatic delight, from a yearning for vengeance to a spirit of humility and forgiveness, from earnest pleading with God for protection to jubilant praise for his deliverance. The general principle that can be seen in all of the Psalms is that the writers have a serene confidence in God's guidance and provision. I hope that reading the introductions from the NIV and my King James Version Study Bible was helpful for you. You can screenshot those and zoom in if it's hard to read it. I know for me it's hard to read because I need my glasses on and they're in my car. The introductions to different books are always going to be similar, but I think my study Bible is always going to have more information, more references to the concordance, and um, just probably more information in general.